good morning so here i am again and we are going to read the next part of the folk tales of bengal and in that and we were and we are actually reading the uh, folk tale which is, is named as fakir chand and how far we came along with this uh, story till now we came to know that two friends one uh, one king's uh, son another was his uh, minister's son those two um, th- these two were roaming around to see different places of earth and in that roaming around they uh, came to uh, they came to a very big pond where they found they killed by some instance they killed a big snake and they received the nagmani and from there the uh, the king's son or the rajputra king's son and uh, he uh, made his soulmate and they get get married and when they decided to go back to their uh, place then they sent back the mantri or the minister's son so that he can uh, can come back with a great procession uh, pro- uh, procession which will be Uh, equivalent or justified with their uh, status and in this in this in in this uh, during the, uh, this uh, this another uh, another raja or king son came around and when he got a glimpse of the uh, 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 of the princess the wife of the uh, the wife of our uh, king's son and he got mesmerized and he was spellbounded by her beauty so then uh, then uh, here the second king was denoted as raja so then this raja uh, announced to um, announced her half announced his half of uh, uh, kingdom and uh, and the, uh, and her sorry and his uh, daughter's hand if somebody can cure and in this uh, sequence we came to know that fakir chand's mother came came to rescue uh, or dispel the and the bewitched uh, uh, son of th- of that raja and in this he actually captured the princess and he uh, sorry she has captured the princess and also she has somehow uh, s- uh, somehow uh, took the nagmani by which the princess came from uh, can and uh, arise from the waterland to the the land of our normal uh, normal earth so let's start so we will start from this light uh, the last stanza come my child thou queen of beauty come to me and i will help you to bathe so saying she approached the princess who seeing what it was only a woman made no resistance the old woman while in the act of washing the hair of the princess noticed the bright jewel in her hand and said put the jewel there here till you are bathed in a moment the jewel was in the possession of fakir's mother who wrapped it up in the cloth that was round her waist knowing the princess to be unable to escape she gave the signal to the attendants attendants in waiting who rushed to the tank and meet the princess a captive great were the rejoicing of the people when the tidings reached the city that fakir's mother had captured a water nymph from the nether region Uh, nether regions the whole city came to see the daughter of the immortals as they called the princess when she was brought to the palace and confronted with the raja's son of obscured intellect the latter said with a shout of exultation i have found i have found the cloud which had settled on his brain was disappear- dissipated in a moment the eyes Eri well vacant the last uh, the last last tr- sorry lastless now 
द आईज एरी वेल द आईज एर वेल वैकेंट द लास्ट लेस नाउ ग्लोड विद द फायर ऑफ इंटेलिजेंस हिज टंग ऑफ विच ही हैड ऑलमोस्ट लॉस द यूज द ओनली वर्ड्स विच ही यूज टू अटर बींग now hair now gone was now relaxed in a word he was restored to his senses the joy of the raja knew no bounds there was great festivity in the city and the people who showered benedictions on the head of fakir chand's mother expected the speedy celebration of the marriage of the raja's son with the beauty of the nether world the princess however told the raja through fakir's mother that she had made a vow to the effect that she would not for one whole year look at the face of another man than that of her husband who was dwelling beneath the waters and that therefore the marriage could not be performed during that period Though the raja's son was somewhat disappointed he readily agreed to the delay believing agreeably to the proverb that delay would greatly enhance the sweetness of those pleasures which were in store for him It is scarcely necessary to say that the princess spent her days and her nights in sorrowing and sighing she lamented that that idle curiosity which had led her to come to the upper world leaving her husband below when she recollected that her husband was all alone below the waters she wept bitter tears below the waters she wept bitter tears she wished she could run away but that was impossible as she was immured within walls and there were walls within walls besides if she could get out of the palace and of the city of what avail would it be she could not gain her husband as the serpent jewel was not in her possession the ladies of the pa- palace and the fakir's mother tried to divert her mind but in vain she took pleasure in nothing she would hardly speak to any one she wept day and night the year of her ho- woe was drawing to a close and yet she was discon- uh, disconsolate the marriage however must be celebrated the raja consulted the astrologers and the day and the hour in which the nap, uh, nuptial or nuptial nap, uh, uh, knot was to be tied were fixed great preparations were made great preparations were made the confe the confectioners of the city busied themselves day and night in preparing sweetmeats milkmen took contracts for supplying the palace with tanks of curds gunpowder was being manufactured for a grand display of fireworks bands of musicians were placed on the sheds erected over the palace gate whoever and anon sent forth many a bout of linked sweetness and the whole city assumed an air of mirth and festivity it is time it is time we should think of the minister's son who leaving his friend in the subterranean palace is had gone to his country to bring horses elephants and attendants for the return of the king's son and his lovely princess with due pomp the preparations took him many months and when everything was ready he started on his journey accompanied by a long train of elephants horses and attendants he reached the tank two or three days before the appointed day tents were pitched in the mango tops adjoining the tank for the accommodation of men and cattle and the minister's son always kept in eyes fixed on the tank the sun of the appointed day sank below the horizon but the prince and the princess dwelling beneath the waters made no sign he waited two or three days longer still the prince did not make his appearance 
What could have happened to his friend and his beautiful wife? Were they dead? Had another serpent possibly, the mate of the one that had died, beaten the princess, prince and princess to death? Had they somehow lost the serpent jewel or had they been captured when they were once? On a visit to the upper world, such were the reflections of the minister's son. He was overwhelmed with grief ever since he had come to the tank he had heard at regular intervals the sound of music coming from the city which was not distant. He inquired of passers-by what that music meant. He was told that the Raja's son was about to be married to some wonderful young lady who had come out of the waters of that very tank on the bank of which he was now seated, and that the marriage ceremony was to be performed on the day following the next. The minister's son immediately concluded that the wonderful young lady of the lake that was to be married was none other than the wife of his friend, the king's son. He resolved, therefore, to go into the city to learn the details of the affair and try, if possible, to rescue the princess. He told the attendants to go home, taking with them the elephants and the horses, and he himself went to the city and took up his abode in the horse of a Brahman. Uh, sorry, uh, his ado, uh, abode in the house of a Brahman. After he had rested and taken his dinner, the minister's son asked the Brahman what the meaning was of the music that was heard in the uh, in the city at regular intervals. The Brahman asked, From what part of the world have you come that you have not heard of the wonderful circumstance that a young lady of heavenly beauty rose out of the waters of a tank in the suburbs and that she is go going to be married the day after tomorrow to the son of our Raja? Minister's son, no, son, no, I ha now minister son says, no, I have heard nothing. I have come from a different country, whither the story has not reached. Whether the story has not reached, will you kindly tell me the particulars? Then Brahman elaborated, the Raja's son went out a hunting about uh, this time last year. He pitched his tents close to a tank in the suburbs. One day, while the Raja's son was walking near the tank, he saw a young woman, or rather goddess, of uncommon beauty rise from the waters of the tank. She gazed about for a minute or two and disappeared. The Raja's son, however, who had seen her, was so struck with her heavenly beauty that he became desperately enamored of her. Indeed, so intense was his passion that his reason gave way and he was carried home hopelessly mad. The only words he uttered day and night were now here, now gone. The Raja sent for all the best physicians of the country for restoring his son to his reason. But the physicians were powerless. At last he, at last he kept caused a proclamation to be made by beat of drum to the effect that if anyone could cure the Raja's son, he should be the Raja's son-in-law and the owner of half his kingdom. An old woman who went by the name of Fakir's mother told, um, took hold of the drum and declared her ability to cure the Raja's son on the tank where the princess had appeared was raised for Fakir's mother a heart in which she, to, she took up her abode and not far from her heart another heart was erected for the accommodation of attendants who might be required to help her. It seems the goddess rose from the waters. Fakir's mother uh, seized her with the help of the attendants and carried her in a palki 
or palanquin to the palace at the site of her raja's son was restored to his sins and the marriage would have been celebrated at that time but for a vow which the goddess had made that she would not look at the face of any male person till the lapse of a year the year of uh, of the vow is now over and the music which you have heard is from the gate of the raja's palace this is brief this in brief is the story then by hearing all these details minister sun said a truly wonderful story and has fakir's mother or rather fakir chand himself been rewarded with the hand of the raja's daughter and with the possession of half the kingdom no not yet fakir has not been got hold of he is a half witted lad or rather quite mad he has been away for more than a year from his home and no one knows where he is that is his manner he stays away for a long time suddenly comes home and again disappears i believe his mother expects him soon what like is he and uh, what does he do when he returns home why he is about your height um, though he is somewhat younger than you he puts on a small piece of cloth around his waist rubs his body with ashes takes the branch of a tree in his hand and at the door of the hut in which his mother lives dances to the tune of dhup 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 his at, uh, articulation is very indistinct and when his mother says fakir stay with me for some days he invariably answers in his uh, in his usual unintelligible manner no i won't remain i won't remain and when he wishes to give an affirmative answer he says hmm which means yes the above conversation with the brahman poured a flood of light into the mind of the minister's son he saw how matters stood he perceived that the princess of the subterranean palace must have alone ventured out into the tank by means of the snake jewel that she must have been captured alone without the king's son that the snake jewel must be in the possession of fakir's mother and that his friend the king's son must be alone below the waters without any means of escape the desolate and apparently hopeless state of his friend filled him with unutterable grief he was in deep musings during most part of the night it is impossible though he, uh, it is impossible thought he to rescue the king's son from the nether regions what if by some means or other i contrive to get the jewel from the old woman and can i not do it uh, by personating fakir chand himself who is expected by his mother shortly and possibly by the same means i may be able to rescue the princess from the raja's palace he resolved to act the role of fakir chand and following day in the morning he left the brahman's house went to the outskirts of the city divested himself of the divested himself of his usual clothing put round his waist a short and narrow piece of cloth which scarcely reached his knee joints rubbed his body well with ashes took in uh, took in his hand a twig which he broke off a tree and thus accord accorded accorded uh, presented tree and thus accorded presented himself before the door of the heart of fakir's mother he commenced operation by dancing in a most violent manner to the tune of dup 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 the dancing attracted the not uh, attracted the notice of the old woman who supposing that her son had come said my son fakir are you come 
come my darling the gods have at last became propitious to us the supposed fakir chand uttered the monosyllable hmm and went on dancing in a still more violent manner than before waving the twig in his hand this time you must not go away said the old woman you must remain with me no i won't remain i won't remain said the minister's son remain with me and i will get you married to the raja's daughter will you marry fakir chand the minister's son replied hmm hmm and danced on like a madman will you come with me to the raja's house i'll show you a princess of uncommon beauty who has risen from the waters hmm hmm was the answer that issued from his lips while his feet tripped in violent uh, tripped it violently to the sound of dub dub do you wish to she- see a manik fakir the crest jewel of the serpent the treasure of seven kings hmm hmm was the reply the old woman brought out of the heart the snake jewel and put it into the hand of her supposed son the minister's son took it and carefully wrapped it up in the piece of cloth round his waist fakir's mother delighted beyond measure at the opportunity a parchun appearance of her son went to raja's house partly to announce to the raja the news of fakir's appearance and partly to show fakir the princess of the waters the supposed fakir and his mother found ready access to the raja's palace for the old woman had since the since the capture of the princess became the most important person in the kingdom she took him into the room where the princess was and introduced him to her it is superfluous to remark that the princess was by no means pleased with the company of a madcap who was in a state of semi nudity whose body was rubbed with ashes and who was ever and anon dancing in a wild manner at sunset the old woman proposed to her son that they should leave the palace and go to their own house but the supposed fakir chand supposed fakir chand refused to accompany with the request he said he would stay there that night his mother tried to persuaded him to return with her but he persisted in his determination he said he would remain with the princess fakir's mother therefore went away after giving instructions to the guards and attendants to take care of her son so my dear friends today i have stumbled upon for more than three or four times and for that i really beg your pardon and i hope uh, you have enjoyed beyond all those uh, hindrances of my pronunciation and uh, we will meet again tomorrow with the next part of this fakir chand the story and till then um, i would say i will request please listen to uh, to rupkatha uh, shamita rupkathara this channel and different uh, contents which i am uh, creating and i am trying to uh, present you with those and i hope it is uh, bring dragging you to <laughs> literally dragging you to your childhood i suppose i hope and if it is so please let me know please subscribe to my channel and also please be be happy be jolly and be um, be happy be jolly and be good to you uh, good to be yours good to uh, good to yourself and good to all others as far as possible so till now please um, give me the permission to leave for today we will meet again tomorrow till then tada